How's it going everybody? Welcome back. I'm here with Dan Downey, rally instructor extraordinaire here at the Team O'Neill Rally School and this is his rally car. And we're going to go through um, a lot of just basic tech stuff, different generations of BMW. He's a BMW man. If you're looking at getting into rallying, rally cross, autocross, whatever it might be, grassroots racing, um, there's some options. So what are the differences basically between the different generations of BMWs? Uh, yeah, so I mean, today we're talking about, you know, rear wheel drive rally, two wheel drive rally. Um, you know, we'll start here with the E30. There was older versions of the 3 Series, you know, the 2002s, the E21s. They're pretty old now. They're 50 years old, some of them, and very not popular in the US. These really were the first popular E30, um, I mean, 3 Series in the US. That were imported in real numbers, right. you know, the 2002s. And that are still new enough to be popular enough to find. You know, the 2002s can go upwards of thirty thousand dollars for a very nice one so super cool car if you're into that sort of thing and you can find one um but yeah this might yeah. be more relevant so yeah the e30 here you know we got a pretty basic light car um mine has the six cylinder up front uh the m20 uh you could find them with very old school four cylinders and much newer twin cam four cylinders they're pretty good for rally um i like the six cylinder i like the power the power of rear wheel drive is you can put more power down than a, a front wheel drive car a lot of times. Um, so that's really where you're making up time. Um, this is pretty stock. You know, I got Bilstein HDs, uh, some structural reinforcement on the rear trailing arms. It's kind of a weak point. And the biggest thing with any BMW is protecting your oil pan. You know, they're low hanging fruit on these BMWs and a good skid plate is really what you want. Um, you know, these came with stock 14s. I like a nice 15 rally tire. Uh, it's got enough power, it's a big enough car for a small 15, um, so that you can find those 15s. I use Mini Cooper wheels, you can buy Methods or whatever you like to have there, but that's, uh, you know, that's about it. You know, this is an 87, they went from 91 back to 84, and only the later models had the better 6 cylinder motor. Um, and you can swap in any of these motors, those, those are well documented from the newer cars if you want even more power. Uh, you know, it's a pretty big space fitting a, for fitting a, a six cylinder into a small car. So if I were shopping for one of these, I would find 318s, 325Es, ESs, Is and Is's and Ixs? Correct. What would um, I want and what wouldn't I want? So you wouldn't really want an IX, it would, I wouldn't recommend it for rallying. Uh, those parts are very scarce and very fragile, um, the four-wheel drive IXs. Um, this is an IS, so that would mean it has a two and a half liter motor, the higher compression motor, um, you know, somewhere in about 170 horsepower. And the IS was really a dress up thing, but it guaranteed you got a limited slip diff from the factory. Um, that's a great thing about BMW, older BMWs, you get you can get a limited slip diff from the factory, you don't have to buy a Quaif or make some crazy $3,000 diff out of it um, to get your you know two wheel drive instead of one wheel drive. From the IS is the two door and the I is the four door, but it's all the same parts? Well, you could get an I, two door, and an IS. IS is always two door, I could be two door or four door. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> And at ES, you know, they have the larger but less uh, compression motor. 2.7 liter. 2.7 liter. So they actually make less horsepower with bigger motor. They were more for economical cruising e on the auto. Economy. Yeah. The yeah. Economy. Uh, and then the older 318s have a very underpowered four cylinder, and the newer 318s in the 90 91 range have a nice twin cam four cylinder motor that uh, you know, makes there about 140 horsepower. So lighter versus bigger six cylinder, it's up to you. 1985 to 92? Four to 91. Okay, 1984 to 1991. And like most of these types of things, you would want like a 1990 or a 91 then, you would think. Uh, in, 80, in 87, what, like this is, they started with the, the newer six cylinder motor, the high compression one, so. 87 and up. Right, but the okay. thing, you could, the body shells are exactly the same, so you can put any of those motors in whatever car, you could find a nice older 84 and swap in yeah. the good parts. Yeah. Um, you know, these are getting up in price a little bit, but still the motors, 
you can find the, my motor for 300 bucks. So you blow it up, oh uh, well. Um, and all the other suspension parts, they're still pretty cheap. You can find any part you would need to be racing. You know, interior parts may be hard to find now, but you don't need so many of those for a race car. Throwing right? those in the dumpster or selling them on eBay anyway. Sure. Yeah. Um, any known real mechanical or electrical problems if I go out and buy a 325 IS and I want to go rally cross it what's gonna break the good thing about older BMWs is they're pretty simple the motors um, this motor has a timing belt prone to problems make sure you change it out every couple years 50,000 miles yeah. is what BMW put on for the interval for that hey. other than that motor is strong driveline strong electrics haven't really done me any problem so you know the older BMWs is less simple less luxury maybe so less things go wrong so why would you go from that um, why wouldn't you just drive one of these which you do why do people go with an E36 or an E46 uh, it's like you said the E30s uh, E36 and E46 are pretty cheap right now you know maybe because they're a little more complicated and they're in that you know that bubble range where their prices come down and these prices are starting to climb back up just to apologize for this car, it's a little shoddy looking compared to most of our rally school fleet because this is one of our drift school cars. So if you come to a drift school, um, we're a little hard on fenders and bumper covers and that sort of thing. So um, it's also why it's a little lower. It's a little lower. It's on tarmac tires. This is actually a 318 Ti. So this is a hatchback version which came with a four cylinder engine uh, and this one has been swapped. This actually has the M3 engine S50. 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 So yeah, this as well, you have a couple engine choices with this. Coming into these, you have six or so engine choices. You have two different M motors in these. You have, uh, you know, the four cylinders. You have the, the four different six cylinders. People stuff V8s in them these days. People I mean, stuff V8s in everything nuts. these days. Yeah, you put an LS in it, go drifting. So interesting things about E36s, especially this one, you switch over to a five lug, different size suspension. Um, the benefit of the front suspension on these is actually the struts come apart from the hubs. The problem with the E30 suspension oh, is that yeah. the hub is attached to the strut mount. It's all one piece. It's all one piece. So you'd have to either weld something on for a rally suspension um, or any aftermarket suspension or get something bespoke, you know, made mm -hmm. custom. Um, that's why I'm still running the HDs for High now. High dollar. High dollar, that's right. Uh, these you have a lot more suspension choices uh, and this one in particular actually has E30 rear suspension still. Yeah, when they built the 318 Ti, it's got the rear subframe from the E30 where most of these E36s had a different rear subframe which is prone to falling out. Um, or it can, something. It's, you know, every car has its weak spots. You know, you put in a little sheet metal here and the subframe doesn't fall out. That's fine. Uh, yeah, this one has the trailing arm rear suspension. Same as the Z3. Same as those Z3 coupes. Those weird things. Uh, well, actually, I saw one of the Z3 coupe on stage just yeah. at Sandblast. Um, the normal E36 will have a multi-link rear suspension. It's a little longer as the E46 will be. You can see this one's bobbed a little bit. It's a little hatchbacky. Um, some people like this suspension better. Some people like the multi-link suspension better for rally. It's up to you, really. Um, and it's up to what you want to build. So the E36s say, um, I was going to go out and try to buy one of these to go autocross, rallycross, 94, 92? 92, 92 to 99. To 99. I owned a 93 mm. or something, and there was a period where the electrics on these were sort of nightmarish, wasn't there? There's a lot more electrics in these. You know, I don't have a lot of experience with the electrics, you know, on hand, but yeah. just knowing, you know, more stuff means more failure points, right? So there's less stuff you can take out, but that means more wiring work to get it going. So it's all about how much work you want to do there, or how much prep you want to do. Yeah, I had a nice uh, dashboard fire oh. in mine. Yeah. And it's all that's partially the condition you buy the car in too, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. But yeah, I mean these. These in running condition, one that's not a, uh, a junk box could be thousand, two thousand dollars for something that needs work. These you can find for five hundred bucks, no problem. 
in still running condition because they're just even more plentiful, less desirable. Some people don't think they look as nice as either this or that, so they don't like them as much. Yeah, the E36 has gone out of fashion with the, uh, the golfing tennis crowd. It's Correct. not modern enough to pull into the country club with um, and get any kind of respect. And these are now pretty dirt Jeep too. Right, and the same thing, they're getting even more complicated, more electronics, more buttons. So but more some, power. But more power. When something fails, people don't feel like fixing it if it costs too much. Right, so that, that's the other thing too. We're moving up in power, we're moving up in weight though, right? We're moving up in complication. So, E46, very similar to E36, different engine choices. Bunch of six cylinders, no real four cylinders made it here into the US for these because they're just that much bigger. Um, you can get these in two door or four door. They don't have the TI in the US. Uh, they made TIs in Europe, which are kind of silly. Uh, very similar suspension choices to the E36. Um, you know, some DMS, some Samsonos, those kind of things. So you can find suspension. Uh, you know, it's heavier, as I say, but it's you know it's Subaru weight. It's not crazy heavy. It's it's pretty low, it's pretty long. 3,000 pounds? 3,200 for these, for sure. Before you strip everything out, obviously. Yep. What's an E30 without a cage? An e Wait. Th an E30 stock is 2,700, 3,000, 32. So they're going up a couple hundred pounds Two each time. Two or 300 pounds They're going generation. up in power every time. So if lightness is your thing, we're going older. If power is your thing, we're going newer. Uh, all right. Uh, as far as these ones, uh, are there any sort of years to look out for as either really good or really bad? I know they've made the 325s and then 328s. Yeah, they had 323s, 3, 325, 328, 330. It's all just engine size. It's all the same base motor. It's uh, If you can find one, the motor you want off the start, that's better, obviously, because all the wiring's right and all that. Um, you know, for rally, these are pretty low and they're pretty big and they're pretty long, right? These E30s are pretty light, they sit pretty high already. And then these E36s are pretty in between, you know? So it's what kind of rally you're doing, it's what kind of, I mean, if you're picking a rear wheel drive car, you obviously have a plan for not doing very rough rallies or anything like that, so. Yeah, that's a point where internationally, if you're in Europe or many other places around the world, there, you know, Ireland, there's tarmac rallies. Right. Um, so there's a lot of rallies that are on paved roads. They're just little paved back roads through the mountain and that sort of thing where these things excel. But we don't have that here. Um, you know, America, our season is all on gravel and some snow events. So... Mm, the, the harder the rally, the, the more slippery it is, the harder it is for you to keep up in these to the front wheel drives. That's where the balance starts to go up from the front wheel drive to the rear wheel drive. Because these are really about how much power you can put down. Right? They're lighter. Um, than four-wheel drive cars, but they don't have the traction of four-wheel drive cars, so they need that traction to put all the power that makes down. Yeah. Um, is there anything newer? This is just what we happen to have on hand, just to shoot a quick video. The E36 through the 40, or the E30 through the 46. Is there anything newer that would be here that might make a good rally car if someone had a bit of budget? A bit of budget is correct. Um, something I'd move into. You know, you're getting pretty big on the size here, right? So you think about rally roads, they're usually pretty small. You know, you want a tight, twisty roads. Going to the next sizes up of the, e th the 3 Series is a little big, a little complicated, lots of, uh, you know, wiring and whatnot. If I were to move further than this, I would go to the 1 Series or the 2 Series if you had a big budget. They um, make a 135, which is a, a big engine in a 1 Series? Right. And they make a 2... 35 and an M2, which is the same as a 1 Series basically, yeah. but just a different facelift, those kind of things. Um, and I'm talking, uh, as you're moving up in size, a 1 Series, a 2 Series is still bigger than the yeah. E30. Than an old 3 Series. Yeah. So. Um, is just something interesting to touch on really quickly, I guess, sort of at the end is 
the M series cars. You know, an E30 M3, an E36 M3, an E46 M3, those have become sort of untouchable financially, the E30s, right? Untouchable in the terms of, you know, you can get a $2,500 one of those, the cheapest M3 in one of those is probably gonna be $25,000. Yeah, at a zero, easily. Yeah, e E36, kind of different, you know, you can get a $500 nice running 328, but you can get a $5,000 or $3,000 M3 in those too. Those are climbing right now. Is there, is that just um, exotic parts that would be useless to you? Or if you were looking at an E36, is there enough reason to get an E36 M3 instead of a 328 or a 325? The older cars, uh, the, the E30M and the E36M, they're very similar. The E30, a little different so in the body styling and everything, but the E36 is very similar from the M to the, the non-M. Um, there's no real difference in subframes or yeah. interiors or anything A lot like of those that. parts end up in the on eBay or in the dumpster anyway. Right. Um, and then Except with for the engine and train. Right, but moving on to these, there's a little bit difference in the subframe and the motor and the front control arms and all that. The M stuff is better. And the biggest difference is starting with the E46 and up, the non-M cars don't have an option to come with a limited slip from the factory. So you're looking at buying a, a quaif or welding your diff on for gravel or, or something of that effect. Or even swapping the subframe and diff out for an M1. So. And more and more common sort of automatic transmissions. You'd have a really hard time. Did they make any E30s with automatics? They must definitely, have made some. Definitely, yeah. yeah I mean, a but lot they made more a in manual. Ton of E36 automatics. Yeah, you'll be finding a lot and of these autos and, and autos. A lot of automatics out there. Right. And moving even further up, you get DSG cars, so people don't buy manuals as much. So. Yeah. Cool, so yeah, that's just the basics of, uh, you know, the generations of these BMWs as they're fit for kind of grassroots racing, you know, rally, rally cross specifically, but it's really, you know, they're the same cars if you're looking at autocross or doing track days or just having a fun winter car or something like yeah, that. Hill climbs, all that stuff, yeah. I've done hill climbs, I've done track days, I've done autocross, I've done everything, and that's a do-all car, you know, rally cars being normal cars, you can pretty much still do anything in them. Um, yeah, the rear wheel drive sort of specifically with a hill climb, you know, you can imagine a front wheel drive car in a hill climb, it's going to be wheel spin, it's going to be the axle hop and stuff, and it, where a rear wheel drive car, you're going uphill, it's rear wheel drive on the power, it's kind of meant for it. And yeah. also you can do, you know, you can take it out and go do a drifting weekend, some amateur drifting events and that kind of stuff where you might be more limited with, you know, okay, you can go try and drift your all wheel drive car, but... Um, <laughs> Something to work out yeah, I mean the car in the middle has done rallies, it's done hill climbs, it's done drift events now, it's a drift car now, so all sorts of lives. Yeah. Cool. Alright, so yeah, that's the basics. Thanks for watching. If you got any questions, sort of just add them down in the comments. I've been Wyatt. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you next time.